Do you have a favorite hymn? Maybe it's one that you have a special memory attached to. Maybe it's related to a family member or somebody who is influential in your life. Or maybe it's just a pretty melody or a text that has a lot of meaning for you. If you do, I would love to hear about it. Put it in the comments below so that I can read and see what hymns you love. And we're going to have an opportunity coming up here next week on Sunday the 27th at 3 o'clock. We're having a hymn festival. Now in the Lutheran tradition, this is Reformation Sunday, and it's kind of like a birthday party almost where we celebrate the beginning of the Reformation. And it's just going to be a great time to come together. The choir will be here. The bells will be here. We'll have other instruments, and we're going to be singing hymns. There'll be opportunities for you to join in. There'll be times when the choir sings. And so it's just, if you love hymns, or maybe if you don't know anything about hymns and you'd like to learn about them, please come on Sunday the 27th and join us for a hymn festival called Timeless Praise. We'll be doing a wide variety of music and I know it will be a blessing and just a really joyful time. We're continuing on in our Timeless Call series, and it's about David this weekend. And there are a lot of stories in the Bible about David from the time he was young all the way until the end of his life. And this is a story that maybe is not quite as well known, but it has to do with David wanting to do something nice for God and God saying, not now. And I think that's a challenge for us when we're praying for something and we want it. We want it now. And if you listened to the sermon last week, God is not a vending machine where we put in our money and we get out what we want and we can get mad when we don't. God does answer. Sometimes it's wait a while. And so that was the case for this prayer. So tune in for that if you want to know more about worship. But as I was thinking about Reformation, planning ahead to that and this story of David, I was thinking about the solas. That's a, a term that's used. It just means only. And so in the Lutheran tradition, we talk a lot about Luther and the solas, and it's kind of the foundation of Protestantism. And so there, depending on who you ask, there are several, <laughs> but five basic ones that we talk about. And so faith alone, scripture alone, Christ alone, grace alone, to the glory of God alone. And so those are the things that as Protestants, we trust the scripture, we have faith, we believe in grace. All of this, of course, through Christ, and we want to praise God. And so that's something that we'll talk more about next week as we get ready for Reformation. But those were in my mind as I was thinking about this weekend, and this beautiful hymn came to mind. And it sort of has those tenets of the Protestant faith right in the middle of it. My faith has found a resting place. So I'm going to read through and think about those things. Faith alone, scripture alone, Christ alone, grace alone, as I read you two of the verses of this hymn. My faith has found a resting place, not in device or creed. I trust the ever-living one. His wounds for me shall plead. And here's the refrain. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. And then I love this next verse also. It's a very sola scriptura verse here. My heart is leaning on the word, the written word of God. Salvation by my Savior's name. Salvation through his blood. And then the refrain again. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. So we're going to be singing that hymn, and it's not one that's found in our Lutheran hymnal, even as Lutheran as that text is that I just read for you. This was written by a school teacher in Pennsylvania back in the 1800s. She was teaching school. One of her students hit her with a slate. Can you even imagine? And it was so bad that it injured her spinal cord, and she was an invalid for the rest of her life, and she was no longer to able to teach. And But she still had such a calling to be a teacher that she took that, and she started writing songs for Sunday schools and writing things for an orphanage because she still wanted to be able to give things to the children. And from that, she started writing hymns and hundreds and hundreds of hymns that Eliza Hewitt wrote. And they've gone on to bless people around the world. And so things aren't always the way we planned, but we can rest and have faith that he died for us. And so we can trust his plan and his call for our lives. Listen to this beautiful arrangement by Marilyn Helm, and I'll be back with you next week. <laughs> 